Dr. Sharon George is a senior lecturer in environmental science at Keele University. Keele University, and is joining us from the UK. Uh, Sharon George, good to speak with you again. Uh, so, look, Ali Jan was laying out there whether the world has progressed from what happened in Rio in 1992, but I wonder if I can just put it to you this way. Boris Johnson, yesterday or the day before, said that we can now perhaps move forward with COP26. Are you as optimistic as he is that this is really a moment um, for the climate? Well, there's, there is hope from COP26. I think there's been a movement from simply talking about those targets. So Greta Thunberg very you know, rightly pointed out that there's been lots of rhetoric about this target and that target. But, uh, but now I think what is different about the, the, the conversations that are going on now are that we're talking about solutions and we're talking about big scale solutions in terms of funding. What is worrying about that is that is this funding going to be about domestic change and infrastructure or is it simply about offsetting um, emissions so that solutions can be put in the developing world, whereas you know, in the global north, so countries like the UK, America, can just keep going without making those drastic changes that we need to. And we all know that we need to make change. And we know that some of those changes are going to be quite painful economically and in terms of infrastructure. And people are getting fed up of, you know, just targets in the future. And, and the, people, the public are impatient to know what they need to do. We can all see that we're, we're rushing towards this precipice of no return with climate change. We're seeing biodiversity crashing out of control. We're seeing uh, more and more global events. And, and these are becoming more apparent. We've been talking about the likelihood of these happening, but now people are actually seeing the impact of climate change. And it's here, it's, it's having an impact. And if, if, if global economies don't work together, we're going to get hit in the pocket anyway through lack of food, through, um, you know, those those essential, essential systems in terms of providing our energy, water and food all being disrupted at a global scale. So it, it's never, ever been more urgent for, for these countries now to just put aside differences and to come to an agreement urgently. Otherwise, we all lose. Absolutely right. It's amazing. I was flicking through my old uh, Blue Peter Green book the other day. You'll remember that, uh, Sharon. And it's amazing how the same language was used back then. That was the midnight is there's is being used now. And, and you talk about this dollar amount. I think the US have put forward 100 billion. But I was thinking, has it ever been worked out just like how much money Zimbabwe would need to get off coal or how much money X country would need to get off coal? Because if we got those actual figures, surely that would be progress and we could actually think about whether it can be afforded, which it must be. That's a very good question. And I think the information on these things is, is there in a disparate way. And I think that that's what this this climate summit does is allow countries to bring those those numbers to the table, and and to argue their points for either support or for what they need or what they can be exempt from, um, because the cost is too high. And I think that's one of the complexities of this because some you know it, it, you know in the UK we it's all well and good we have access to you know we're developing making massive strides in battery technology we have wind technology and we're developing hydrogen at a you know at a very promising rate but that we're very privileged to be able to do that whereas countries that are just you know developing their economic strength and and that's based on fossil fuels that's a big step to, to and it's a big ask to, to come away from that and the the amount of support that's needed country on country is not the same and so I think this is where the, this is again the promising thing about the the conversation moving to one about funding because that's always been the block here hasn't it it's been about how much how much does this cost on a country by country basis and and avoiding issues of climate justice so where the you know at the moment climate change is hitting the most vulnerable around the world hardest and you know the, those and that's not right but but by the action of the rest of the world so you know climate change you know I, I, 
it's it's kind of my mantra it does not respect borders and it affects everybody and i think we need to be thinking globally and thinking and owning it as a global problem and i'm not sure that's happening on a political front yet yeah well let's hope they are listening we'll be speaking to you again in the weeks up to cop 26 sharon george there from keel university appreciate that thank you